All right, we are going to work on the return to libc attack today. Uh, now, just like my previous attacks, I'm going to focus on how to perform a successful attack and not a lot of why we are doing things. So if you want to know why we are doing things, I would refer you to the textbook, which is an excellent resource. So I'm going to get the lab set of files now. Return to libc. And these are the lab set of files. And if I go inside the task, you can see this is the return to libc attack. Now task 1 and task 2, both of these will be required for future attacks. So for instance, task 3 and 4. Now task 3 is what we are going to focus on today. I'm going to minimize this for now. I'll come back to this document later on. So let's see where we got downloaded files. We have three files inside this directory. Let's open the terminal. Alright, now before we start, we need to set up our environments. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is disable the ASLR or address space randomization. And another step is we have to link to the Z shell instead of dash. So these are two countermeasures against this attack which we are disabling before we do anything at all. Now the next step would be to compile this program. However, before you compile, so let's take a look at the uh, inside that make file. So if I open the make file, you can see this is what the make file looks like. Now, this n equals 12, this is the default value. However, if your instructor has asked for a different value, make sure to change that value right here. So I'm going to start with 12. I'll keep that. We'll close that. And then type make. When I typed make, uh, that redlib.c program, our vulnerable code, it was compiled and then converted to setuid program. So if I type in ll, it will show me that I got this new program, redlib. Now, return to libc attack has a few different steps. So before I talk about how to get this working, let's take a look inside that exploit.py file and then we are going to have a, an idea what we need to do. So the exploit.py file, this is the code for us to generate the bad file. Now within the code, you need to fill up six different values. So x, y, and z, these are going to be decimal numbers. This will dictate the structure of your stack frame. I'll talk about that later. And we also need the address for bin s8 the address for system and address for exit. So that's what we need to figure out. So three decimal values and three addresses. All right. So our first step would be to figure out the address for system and exit. So let's do that. Now to find that we have to use the debugger. So gdb so dash q, that means we are running it in quiet mode and redlib. Now you can see uh, when we go inside, we are going to make a mistake actually. So let's quit out of this. So we do not run the debugger without a bad file already available. Otherwise the debugging is going to fail. So let's create that bad file. So when I use path bad file and the ll, now I have an empty bat file. So make sure you have an empty bat file before you start the debugger. Otherwise your debugging values would be incorrect. So now let's try the debugger. And we are going inside, then create a breakpoint at main. Run. And we are ready to print out the address for system function. And we got that. We also need it for exit. And that's all. So we quit. So these are the two addresses we needed. So let's actually put this inside our exploit.py file. 
so that we don't have to scroll up later so opening it simply copy this from here and this is my system address also copy the exit and then save close this all right so we have found two addresses already so next stage is to find the address for bin sh so this is a string and we have to put as an argument for our system function call now how do i do that so we are going to find this out using an environment variable so let's export or create an environment variable first so the command would be export new 001 equals bin sh now you can see all the commands that i need for this attack i have listed them on the left hand side i'm gonna include this in the video description so please check the description for these commands now we can verify whether so this is an optional thing but you can verify whether this environment variable is actually in our environment so it is in our environment so new 001 now why is it called new 001 so make sure that remember this value and this is the variable we are going to use in our program so we can see that bnsh is inside our shell but what is its address so that's what we will have to figure out so to print out the address we need a program so let's create a simple c program which is called print env.c and then we'll open that program now the program is actually given as part of the lab instructions i'll show you where so if you go to task 2 and this is the program so you can simply copy this and bring it here paste so you need to structure this a little bit so it's easier to understand And we are done. Now, we do need to add a couple of header files. And the environment variable, again, for us is this new 001 so let's change this to new 001 so this program will help us to find the address for this environment variable so then we can close this so we have to compile that program now when you are compiling make sure to use that m32 tag uh, flag so that it compiles this in a 32-bit program the output now the output file is file name is very important it must be exactly six characters long because the program that we are trying to attack red lib is also six characters long so make sure this name is six characters long so when i compile if i try the list so we got this new program and so let's run that program do you see this is my address for this bin sh string so i'm going to copy this address and let's put this inside our exploit.py then save it so now all three of our addresses we have found them already we need to figure out the value of x y and z now now to figure out x y and z of course we could run the debugger and debug uh, the red leaf program in the debug mode however uh, the author uh, has made it easy for us to figure this out because we did that in the buffer overflow attack but we don't need to do it now so simply if i type in red leaf, so let's run that program you can see we get this output and within that output we are getting these two values one is the buffer address 
and another is this frame pointer address which is EBP. So we can get the differences between these two numbers using a hex calculator and that will give us the offset or the size of the buffer uh, by subtracting one number from another. So let's, let's see how to do that. Now, so this can be done in many different ways. I'll show you an easy process. So just go to Google and search for hex calculator. Go here. And now you can add subtract numbers like this. So let me copy the frame pointer value. And actually only copy this part. Paste. Go back. Also copy the beginning of the buffer. Copy and paste it here. I'm going to subtract. And we find the value or the difference between those two numbers is 24. It is 24. Now this could be different for you if your instructor has given you a different n value within the make file. I told you about this before. Now your result could be different. So we found 24. Now if your value is 24, so let's open our exploit file now. We are ready to insert our last numbers. If that value is 24, that means when you are jumping to system, the EBP value is going to be increased to 28. So 24 is the number that you found and it's going to be 24 plus 4. Now why is this? We are changing Y and not X and Z. Again, this is something that you should find in the textbook. But the basic explanation is system, this should be your EBP value plus 4. Uh, so whatever your EBP was in in the previous function and it becomes EBP and then plus 4. Or maybe you can, uh, I'll write this in a different format. So let's go down. So basically the structure of your file would be at the top you have bin sh then after bin sh you are going to put exit I'm drawing the stack frame uh, here just to make this a little bit easier to understand and then at the bottom you have system so sys exit would be our return address this is going to be in our previous frame pointer address and bin sh is the argument of system so system should be at the bottom then exit and then bin sh so that means y which is for system address this is going to be 24 plus 4 so whatever number you found in the previous calculation that plus 4 then of course exit goes after that so it's going to be 24 plus 8 and x is going to be at the top so 24 plus 12 so that's how the stack frame is organized. When you are done, simply save this file and close this. Okay, let's go back. So at this time, if you take a look, our bat file is zero byte, of course. So if I run that exploit.py file, so let's try. And then check the file size now. Now our bat file is now 300 bytes. So what happened was that exploit.py file generated that bat file. Now the moment of truth, let's see if the attack worked. So dot slash redlib and yes, it worked. So we are inside that root shell now. You could type in id or also things like who am I and it shows you are the root. So and we are done with task 3. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video helpful and please like and subscribe. If you have any questions about the attack, a specific error that you are receiving, please put them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.